and welcome to Mailbag. I don't no know boy. which episode Mailbag it is. It's but I can... episode uh, 69, uh, 69 with a running time of 4.20 right. minutes. Um, and, uh, and 13. Also... Oh, no. It's un- unlucky for some. Oh, mailbag it'll, 13. It'll be unlucky for everyone whose emails I read out. Shall we start with probably the most boring email that I think we've had? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so. This is from uh, Mr. Waffles. I mean, this is this just... Uh, I'll tell you why this made me laugh in a sec. I work for a company that manufactures and services water pump booster sets. These are required right. when any building is taller than a couple of stories and the mains isn't sufficient or requires a large water demand. After Holy running crap. the manufacturing department for countless Slow years... Slow down, we're getting right into this. I know. <laughs> I've recently become a service engineer, man in a van, and today I was doing some works on the unit in the basement that supplies water to the building of the new Hooters in Liverpool. <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't yeah. realise this go. at the time. But I also manufactured the booster set in our factory that we supplied for the building's renovation. Not an interesting story, I know, but it was pretty cool for me, since you've mentioned Hooters on a few occasions. I've got to say, <laughs> it, it made me laugh. You have a very passive life, my dude. I installed the um, gushing pipe into the new uh, Hooters, and uh, when I left, when I was finished, let me tell you, there was more than one my gushing pipe. My pipe was also gushing. <laughs> left behind. I just like the, a, a water booster set. Set. It just sounds like the most boring thing ever. It made me think of the box factory episode in The Simpsons, where he goes, he takes the kids on the school trip to the box factory. He's like, we make a number of corrugated boxes. And they're like, do, <laughs> do you have any boxes? He goes, oh no, we don't assemble the boxes here. That's dumb. <laughs> <Cleveland." laughs> yeah. No, I find oh, the older I get, the more interested I am in dumb shit like that, though. Right. Like, I go to a box uh, assembly plant and enjoy the, the shit out of myself Like uh, while I was there. Uh, me, me, honestly, me too. I, I'd be fascinated. To yeah, I went to a, a box potato factory. factory one time. That was pretty awesome. Like, I would love to go to like the, uh, the, the local dairy to check that What's out. What's a potato factory? Like a field? No, what are you it's talking um, about? it's a, it's like a it's like they they got to process them, you know? They got to uh they they got to package them, right? So there's a whole system um to do with sort of uh identifying the right size of potatoes, right, getting the duds right. out, um and then and then ultimately packaging them and then organizing them in a warehouse for them to go to different places. You know uh, what I, I'd like to see I I read um how they make French fries for McDonald's. Yeah. They, they have a, a stream of water going through a pipe, and at the end of the pipe, there's like a mesh, and they just right. drop potatoes into the stream of the water, and it blasts them through this mesh. Yeah. So you have potatoes pouring into this pipe, and at the other end, you just have French fries just shooting out into shooting these out, bins yeah. that catch uh, them. It's clever it's pretty stuff. Pretty amazing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, mm-hmm. the 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 sort of uh, mass manufacturing um, side of things is is always like like. I watch Inside the Factory, you know, mm. when it's mm. on. I don't seek it out, but I with like Greg. it when it's on. Yeah, with that, Greg. That is absolutely amazing. I can't believe it. He's looking at like a handle making machine. Yes. Yeah. You're telling me this makes handles for, for doors. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I know. It's, it is like that. But honestly, like some of the stuff is fucking mind blowing. Whenever like, you open a door, you don't think, where did that fucking handle come from, <laughs> do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here today to find out where the handles come from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, yeah. this is uh, this is from someone that lives in Norway and has requested that I withhold their name. And you know, Norway, uh, yes, I'll explain why. And this time, I'm actually not going to say their name. So, apologies for the person I did before. Um, uh, what is a, what is a typical Norway name? Even well, um, I don't want to like go that. into that. Oh, Let's right, not even yeah. speculate. All right, you'll find out why. Too many episodes ago, you were talking about strange traditions, namely Christmas traditions from different parts of the world, and this is their experience. Uh, I'm born and raised in Norway, but both of my parents are from Iran. I therefore right. did not grow up with Norwegian traditions the first years of my life, and would later experience them at an older age. Now, what was lacking in most cases was nostalgia, so some of these experiences were quite weird for me. For instance, during Christmas, all Norwegians. That's all. We'll gather in front of the screen and watch that sketch you've mentioned, Dinner for One. Do you remember we talked about that before? Mm-hmm. Yes, we've talked mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Which is very big in Germany, so apparently big in Norway too. Which I guess is funny the first time you watch it. Problem is, having seen it multiple times at an adult age, with no fond memories attached to it, it ends up becoming a chore. But Dinner for One is just the appetizer for what's to come, and it's the weirdest thing about Norwegian Christmas. It's a 1973 movie from the Czech Republic called Three Wishes for Cinderella where the audio is in its original Czech language, 
except it's lowered so one Norwegian guy can dub over all of it by himself. Every character is dubbed to Norwegian from this one guy with the original audio behind him. The movie itself, being as old as it is and with the cringy plot it has, is difficult to watch, but the dubbing is what gets me. Imagine every character, no matter what age or gender, has the same voice by a somewhat nonchalant voiceover artist. It's truly remarkable, but every Norwegian loves it. Uh, and then he's requested I withhold his name in case every Norwegian hunts them down, pitchfork style, which right. is fair enough. But I, I do love the idea of just one guy that just like, Who's going to dub this? I'll do it. It's like, well, there's like 20 characters in it. Yeah, I can do voices. And he just does his normal voice. Just get, uh, we, we got to do this quickly and cheaply. Just get Dubby <laughs> McGee in. And, uh, yeah. but... <laughs> well, well, this happens more often than you realize, right? Like, um, first of all, no one complains when it's an audio book, right? Read by one guy and he does all the men and women That's voices. That's a good point. Right? Yeah. Secondly, um, I was watching the Physical 100, which is the Korean I saw that. Squid Game yeah. thing, which I thought was quite good. There is a dub for it, um, which I had on. I watched the and dub. It's, it's quite funny yeah. because- You watched the dub? A, 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 I yeah, I watched the dub I watched of the it. dub. The dub. Because Any good? Apparently- Well, I read this somewhere that they got like- they, There were so many voices, <laughs> right, in it, like a hundred testers, right? That they, they sort of had to get anyone and who was anyone, like on staff, just to come in and do a line, right? Because they didn't need like a, a profession. And they, they had obviously a lot of the same guys do the same voices. And so it kind of, it didn't feel very good because they didn't have distinct enough voices. There was no right? character to them, is there? No. Yeah. And, and, and I think, and apparently they just got like the lighting guy and like random guys to dub over it or like random guys in the office. You know, it'd be like <laughs> us leaning on office staff for like because can you do one line for this character thanks <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean um That's so no I, I i i i don't i don't i think some people are very talented and can do loads of voices though so it could you might you might not even know especially with like um south park or whatever you know trey and matt basically do every voice yeah they? yeah and when you look at some of the people on the Simpsons as well, like some people, sure, Hank they just Zaria do like Marge and that's it. But voices, some other yeah. people do You don't do need like to use his last name, just call him voices. Hank. Hank, I mean, sorry. Lewis already Hank. called them just Trey and Matt, so. Like, <laughs> Trey and Matt. We're very, we're I forgot very real I forgot here. the rest of their names. Trey Parker yeah. and Matt Stone. Oh, yeah, sorry, I remember. Yeah, Trey and always. Matt. Trey. Yeah, you know, Hank does a really good uh, <laughs> job on uh, <laughs> I'm like name dropping my buddy. Some of the voices he does. Love South Park, by the way. We're going for like 25 years. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, didn't they? They had a, a really good one recently about, um, fuck, remind me, Jog My Memory. Pr Prince it, Harry. Yes. Published his book called Wah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm too privileged. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was basically the just the, the, the I haven't seen the episode, but I, mean, I, watch it again. I love the fact that I, I still, whenever I tune back to South Park and catch an episode, I, I'm still surprised by how far they push it. Yeah, the, like I, I, it's, they, they I, really will. I'm always amazed it. by how quickly they can uh, produce oh an episode as yeah. well so that it's still current. I think that's been the, the, the winning formula for them. I think all these by years. not having animation that's like good you could just bosh this out in a yeah, few weeks absolutely yeah. So, yeah it's almost like doing a podcast right like yeah you, they can just get something out very quickly but even then even 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 producing something that quickly the the writing in it is is often that's very funny amazing. as well so yeah. it's it's pretty incredible uh this is from uh someone who says uh throughout the podcast you guys have mentioned coal mines and how bad they are for the environment and who could possibly work there i'm 28 years old and live in colorado when i was 23 i was trying to make money fast for my family my wife suggested that i work at a coal mine since her Jesus. father works there and makes 50 bucks an hour. Wow. I got a job at an underground mine. My job title was roof bolter, and he drilled eight to 20 foot bolts into the roof to prevent small to large sections of coal falling. I'm a oh, hardcore believer oh, in climate change, global warming, etc. My time working at the coal mine taught me that most miners believe that climate change and global warming is fake news right. or conspiracies. Yeah. Honestly, even bringing up the subject will get you shunned. Yeah. That being said, it was one of the favorite jobs I've ever had. If you guys ever want to hear stories about greasings, crew initiations, and or the interworkings of a modern coal mine, just mention it on a podcast and I or somebody else will fill, us, fill you in. Fill us in! There's Give certain, me some coal there's mine certain jobs that I have decided I would never do. Uh, one of them is looking after anybody else. Uh, any job that involves 
wiping somebody's ass or washing them down. You literally have been doing that for the last 10 it's years. Fine. It's fine. When it's about? your own babies, it's a bit different. I'm talking about wiping an 85-year-old's ass and right, okay. changing well, I mean, their, their piss-soaked uh, well, give underpants it some time, every day and you stuff. Know. I don't we want to do any of choice. that. I, I, I have you, the choice. If this podcast doesn't I have the work choice. Out. I choose not to do it. I also right. choose not to work underground. I, I just don't want to be saying, down there. I'm just saying, you've been at, you've been ass wiping for ten years. I have, you, but you're it's a pro different. at it. It's different if anything, when it's a you, baby. You're qualified. I don't mind do you know wiping mean? my own baby's ass. Okay, like it's, it's, it's in a weird way wiping your baby's ass just feels like wiping your own ass. It's it really, not. It's it not so bad. Like it really else. isn't so bad. But I would not want to wipe a grown man's ass or a grown woman's <laughs> I don't ass know, like, or, I... or anything. You know what I mean? Well, interestingly, you say I don't that. want to be near anybody's I think ass it's not or too hoochie bad. coochie or anything. Just a couple of wet wipes, job done. No, like, it's I think not. You're over, over egg not. In the pudding These people here. are ill as well most of the time. If you're, if you're at the point <laughs> you're doing they this, they got gross, gross poo. They could. Oh, good they lord. They might have sores. Well, or in anything. that case, you have to make them some porridge or something. Get them some like get them some fiber in their diet. Well, it you sounds know, like you out. really love all get this. So why about. don't you do it, and then I don't have to do it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. Well, now that does preclude you. That does preclude you from being a part of a sniper team because we have an email from travis here right. this is amazing what? this ties in perfectly hi guys i just thought i'd let you know uh on an episode in, in november you guys spoke about snipers having a piss in a jug and throwing away their poop sips thought this would alert the poop trackers i would just like to say it's way worse than that <laughs> the poop trackers the poop don't trackers. sound like something you got poop you said. in sector we c5 poop <laughs> <laughs> release the hounds <laughs> <laughs> Get me Jed Cullock. He's the best they poop can tracker smell there is. Poo at four miles. <laughs> so it says snipers mostly work in teams of two. When they're in position, they could be there for a very long time. Literally days where they have to be looking like, through the scope at every moment. They piss where they lay. Hold on. Right, they can't look right. away to have a shit. The spotter will undo their pants and help them maneuver whilst the sniper remains looking through the scope. The spotter may also have to wipe the sniper's bum. So there you go. You cannot be a sniper. Since. I could be a sniper. I just wouldn't be the spotter. I could I could be the shot taker. I just yeah. wouldn't be the ass wiper. Like, that uh, is that is some fucking dedication. If I, I think if you're going out on like Who's a long sniping that? mission, though, couldn't they just fit you with like a bag and then you could take a bunch of um, like diarrhea pills and then the opposite. Yeah, you no, just you could just free flow, pills. right? Or constipation pills either way. You could just free flow into that bag and then nobody would have to um, sort you out. It just mean that like after a certain point, obviously, you'd have to return to base and, and I mean, po empty pooping out, is a classic thing, right? It's the same thing with tank crews and stuff, right? Like if you're, you know, in a, in a fucking, if you've managed to squeeze yourself into one of these tanks, which is not the easiest process. Don't they have like know? a chute at the bottom of the tank that you can poop out of though? Like, a, like, a, like well, on a train. The poop chute. That's they got the a, weakest, right. weakest point on a tank. Well, That's it's like, right, it's like in the middle. I'd, I'd imagine that, it's like in the middle and it's like <laughs> underneath. So nobody. Yeah, but if you right. leave it open, a landmine's going to get in there. That's true. Who lets the poop chute open? <laughs> yeah, you don't leave it open though. That's rule number one. <laughs> the tank crew. Close <laughs> the poop chute. <laughs> What is this? Uh, I don't. I, well, listen. If you're a tank crew, let us know. Uh, yeah, let us know. Uh, you're not shitting. Okay. Follow up. Uh, as somebody who has been in an enclosed space with turds before, uh, my friend uh, took a shit into a yeah, margarine yeah. container and sealed it yeah. and uh, opened it in a car during the winter when all the windows were closed. Let me tell you, nobody's shitting into a, a container or a jug inside a tank. That's close quarters. Everybody's gonna be sick. Like that. That smell would be overwhelmingly bad. Yeah. So interestingly, when I did the MRE streams, uh, I learned a bit about how they do the rations, and a lot of it is designed to bung you up. Right. Yes. Like the famously the army biscuits that they give out. The reason there's tons of biscuits is they will bung you up. And the point yeah. is, you're bunged up for a couple of days, and then when it's a good time, you take the the gum. The chewing gum is like a gum that makes you poop. Right. So an army. MRE, the rations are designed around pooping when you when is a good time. It's just when your ass it, is in your hole. Like, when uh, you're in the hole, and I've been watching. Uh, poop. I watch Band of Brothers in the Pacific, and that is my big takeaway. There's always some guy who's who's yelling at everybody during the battle. You know, he's yeah. running around saying, "Keep moving, keep moving, get your ass out of that hole." 
Get yep. your ass into that hole. Yep. Get on your ass. Get off your ass. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of that, right? He's the, the ass man. That's his yeah. job. Stay on my this, ass. Stay on my ass. Right. Cover my ass. Yeah. yeah. It's all asses. It's all yeah. bottoms with you Americans, they're isn't it? They're obsessed. Um, so this is this is a good one. I'm going to have to drag this. I hope I can drag this picture to Discord. Um, this is uh, from Jordan. Uh, I was scrolling through Facebook and saw a post about a man who exposed himself in a park in Australia, right. uh, and they saw a composite sketch of the perpetrator and instantly thought they bore a striking resemblance to one of us. Let's see if I can just drag this over here. Hang on, I'll have to say- To one of know. us. One of one us. One of us. Yeah. Oh, God. I thought he was going to say myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, or something. I thought the story no. was going to- I didn't know where this was going. This is, which this one, is the person. Which one of us is it? This is, this is who it is. <laughs> 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 oh my god! It looks like a Sips sex doll. <laughs> I'd fuck it. <laughs> yeah, that is the face of a man who's just been caught exposing himself in a park. Oh, oh me, shit! Man. I don't know how we're going to share what's this the, with the, the audience. What is the psychology behind that? What what causes people to expose themselves? What uh, what did, like what what do they get from that? Like it's I, a, I've, it's, I've it is a, a sexual it. thing, right? It like, is. So we've, I've read a bit about it. Fucking and, yeah. It's almost it's always that they get off on the shock and surprise and possibly the fear of the person that they're exposing themselves to. Right. So if you think about it, if if I approach um, a, a group of young women and whip my tadger out and they will scream and run away, that's quite a powerful feeling, isn't it? Where you feel like, my penis has terrified these women. And I think for some guys... Yeah. It, it's a it's a it's a power trip, Gosh. and it's a it, it's it's a a thing that makes them feel like a like a big man. Really, that's weird. Reckon, that that yeah. was the Louis C.K. Uh, was up, was doing that. When, no, he uh, jerked off in front of people. Oh right, like, okay. his whole thing. Was I know, that, like I, I knew he did, but like I thought, I guess yeah, that's like was, even worse. Yeah, that's like that's like flashing version two. Yeah, but the 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 issue with what he did was that he would ask if he could do it. And he didn't oh. understand that if you're a big fancy comedian and other much lesser comedians want to be your friend in part because you might be able to help their career, then saying, you guys mind if I jerk off? Is kind of like saying, I'm going to jerk off and you have to say yes. That's the power dynamic that, that people have do, an do issue you, with. Do you, I mean, okay, mooning, right? Still seen as kind of a cute thing. Or is that now also basically just illegal? I don't meaning? know. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it, look, I'm just saying to all those would-be flashers out there, um, there's other options. Are you right? going to be careful though? If I'm mooning somebody, if I pull my pants down too far, they're seeing my ball sack and everything. Yeah, like, it's dangling. You, you really well, look, have again, to that's, be careful. But that's fine. Right? It's if not, you, that's what you want really. anyway. I don't, I don't want to see anybody's I'm just saying, balls. I don't want to see show someone's someone, balls or ass, but if, really. But if all you're trying to do is get a shock effect off of someone, I don't know, Like, I think it's more than that. I think it must be something, I don't know. Well, like, if you're mooning thing... somebody and bending over, they they can gaze directly into your <laughs> asshole as well. <laughs> what, is the, what is the that, fucking that answer? That particular aperture of the, the anus is, is, uh, is I visible. I think one thing I said before on this was um, people post dick pics because they think they're going to get reciprocation. Right, yeah. it's like oh, if if you if I send you a picture of my dick, you'll send me a picture of your tits, right? Yeah, because you have to. That's it's not like, a oh, fair well. trade. That's not a fair. I trade. don't think that's it's a not... very fair trade. What What do you expect? Well, a for, big picture if... of the punani. I mean, you know, I showed well, you mine. What's, show me but what's exchange for the the picture of the the dick? The tits, then, I'll then. show you my well, I've, uh, being somebody uh, I know, sad. I know obviously about dick pics and dick pic sharing and stuff, but I've I've never taken no, a picture of my I've penis never or received You'll a, say ball a dick sack pic. is equivalent to tits. What is a, so what what if is a dick is a dick <sighs> pic just you're taking a picture of your flaccid ass dick or no, you get it hard, I you believe. You get it hard and you grip it, yeah, you, <laughs> you, grip, you grip it and rip it, and then you take a picture, right? And then you clip right. and then you clip it and you ship it. That's this the, isn't our that's world. The is, is there it? like a little this bit of not... like uh, pre jizz glisten on that as well? Or get some glean going you on? You got the a little bit of glean. In my experience, I don't think anyone's making it look good. None of these. It looks like a frightened ghost. Well, that's Jeremy, your dick no... pics. Maybe I'm talking about <laughs> other people's dick pics. Might be extremely <laughs> impressive. I think outside of a sexual context, that uh, like genitals are kind of. Not, They're not, not using like soft focus. There's no filter to make your dick. Look I don't want to. I wouldn't want to look at if somebody's sending me a dick. Oh my pic, god, that's such a good idea. I want it to be like a highly <laughs> sexualized dick, not just like yeah. 
Not just there. Not just some just some dangly, boring dick. I want to see like a rock hard, you know. Um, let's be perfectly blunt. S sexual organs, if you're just looking at them on their own, they're just kind of boring. Yeah. It's just, you know, they're not the most attractive part of a person, generally no, speaking. No, but I mean, like, if you look, at, you think of like old magazines, like, you know, when you were a kid and the magazines in the woods and, and stuff, yep. like H Hustler and, and Playboy and stuff. They they would like they they would do up like the pussies and stuff, right? I never I don't remember ever seeing pictures of dicks. What do you mean, really? But like, no, well, they, they, what do you mean that? What do you mean? Kind of like the they way they sell food, you know? They but they like spritz them up a bit or something, or, you know? Like they like, they like lube it up. They make it look appetizing, like a, you know? A splash yeah. of olive oil and a sprig of basil. They, they, yeah. That's what they would do. But if you're just sending me a dick pic, you just woken up and you just pull down your underpants and take a picture of your. You know your your sagging genitals. That doesn't. It's yeah. not going to do it. I I need yeah. some glitz and glamour in there too. Yeah, like, glam it up. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you send it going into, I want to see some dewdrops on that cock and stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I need to, <laughs> I want to see. I want you know. Right. You got to You got to You got to gussy it up. I want some beads of Maybe sweat a, a on that. Hat, yeah, yeah. A, a hat and a scarf. I'm thinking if it's winter, like ha Merry Christmas, and there's like a, a picture of your dick with a little woolly hat on the end, a little little scarf. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be quite a good sure, idea. Sure, yeah. Like, I mean, people go around and do that crochet bombing of fucking post boxes and shit. Crochet bomb some cocks. Why yeah, not? Yeah, right. Yeah, get on it. Before we continue, today's podcast is sponsored by Aura Frames. These are really cool digital photo frames that you can put in your house or on the shelf or in your office and fill them with photos and videos from the app over Wi-Fi. Uh, it looks great. And I bought one for my parents last year. My mum actually uploads her holiday photos to it. And so they appear um, when I'm in my living room, which is super, super nice. When I got it, I actually preloaded it with a bunch of pictures and messages already. So... She just turned it on and it was very easy. Uh, there is an offer for Mother's Day. You can save by visiting AuraFrames.com. That's A-U-R-A frames.com. If you use the code TRIFORCE, you get $30 off plus free shipping. This offer does end on May the 14th. So don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. You can go to AuraFrames.com and use the code TRIFORCE to get $30 off plus free shipping but on the best-selling Aura Frames. This week, we're sponsored by ExpressVPN, Using the internet without a VPN is like checking in your baggage at the airport, but leaving it unlocked. You might just think your stuff's kept private, but you never know who's going through all of your anime body pillows and porcelain figurines that you've bought and rubbing their faces over them. You, they don't need to do that. Uh, you need to use a VPN when you go online because your ISP can see every single website you visit and they can legally sell this information without your consent to ad companies, tech giants who use your own data to target you. Browse anonymously with ExpressVPN. It's easy to use. It's just an app. You run it. It works on phones, on laptops, on routers, and it's great. I use it every day and it makes me just feel more comfortable that I'm not being targeted and having my data stored in some gigantic vault uh, used to blackmail me in the future. Uh, <laughs> secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash triforce today. That's e x p r e w -S, s v p n dot com slash triforce. You get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash triforce. On to the show. So, yeah, th I'm, I don't really use TikTok, uh, but sometimes people show me things on it. Um, that's that's the where I am in my life. Right. <laughs> I've, I, people you, when will you show say me people, TikToks. you mean Sarah, don't you? No, I've got a couple of friends who send me links to TikToks as well. Right. Do you okay. know what I mean? And so I'll, I I'll, love it. It's hilarious. But, I saw a TikTok you know, the other day of a man with a whole bunch of baby parrots. He had like 10 baby parrots. And uh, wow. it, as it went on, the parrots got older and older and they were like, um, bon like he was like he he had like bonded to them, and he was like all of all ten of them were in a row. He was like tucking them in to go to bed and kissing them and everything, and they were like kissing him back and stuff. I mean, it was what the it fuck? was weird. Yeah, I mean, it's all right though. What's like, going on in the world? I don't know, man. Did he just do that whole thing for a TikTok? I think so. Do you reckon it would it would have been like it would have been pretty time lapse though because these pair I don't know how quickly a parrot grows, but no, I mean, some I mean, they were really like you know you some, know like when they don't even have feathers and stuff like they were small and then all of a sudden they had plumage. So. Yeah, they take a couple of months to get to that stage. Yeah, I think. so he would have been. They also grow up quite quick birds. They're sort of forced to, I think. Because, this would have been a or slow, at least they're a supposed to, even though they're like juveniles for like 
years, they do look like adults because I mean, they're, they're they wild animals, to, aren't they? They've got they to have up. to blend in, right? Yeah, yeah. Laura the Jungle. Fascinating. I, I do wonder about this. Like some people, it's not, it's on. You see it on YouTube, right? Some people do take like months to make a video, right? Like yeah. there's this one guy who makes Factorio videos where he plays the game for hundreds of hours and then edits it into one video. And so yeah. you know he can't he can't put a video out more than once every month or two, right? Yeah, and right. I kind of respect that, right? I I kind of respect that level of effort. Um, yeah, and, and it yeah. feels like people they love the passion of doing it as well. They're like mm. like, and it's the same for a, t- a, a TikTok. Like people will put in hours, like weeks of work to make a fifteen second TikTok. I think with a lot of this stuff, though, there is a there is a notion that um, anyone can anyone can make it, anyone can do it, anyone could go viral, and that's true. Anyone can really, but it, it, it's just so rare, you know. Like you, you, you yeah. you'll get through your whole life, and you'll probably never know somebody who's had a viral thing on YouTube. Well, I think this is why whatever, so you know, many like, people or who are who have had success. So most people who have had success and are a, a well-rounded, normal, non-narcissistic asshole usually say, "I was just lucky." Right? You hear yeah. it all the time because you you see stuff. Oh, I see stuff all the time, which is really good. And I'm like, "Why has this not got any views? Why is this not popular? Why yeah. is this not done well?" Yeah. Right? Especially with games. Like sometimes I'll see an incredible game on Steam and it's got no no sales at all or whatever. You know, it's really sad. There's more um, to it, it than just luck, but it is rooted th- in luck. There is, some, sure. I mean, yeah, being good helps, right? Yeah. But like a lot of the time, you can make you can make something brilliant, and then it just doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. And it's really sad. also a lot of really mediocre shit gets very popular because they got lucky or a, yeah, you know, it got popular. It's, it, it, yeah, it's right just place, the right time. Because most people don't know what, what's going. I mean, like I was talk talk a lot about board games, and we talk. Um, I was talking to this guy who's making the. Um, it's making a board game for fuck. I don't know what it is. Oh god, I can't remember. It was um god. What is it? Apex. Apex Legends. Mm. Oh, um, right. The board game because that that franchise needs a board game for sure. Like why? What is what? Why? I mean, it's probably going to be pretty good because I think people who design this stuff no- normally know what they're doing. But yeah. is it just like are they just using? <laughs> the like the the imagery and and all that stuff from apex i think just it's to tough make a board game. right it's the same thing with video games sometimes when you're when you've got a universe that you're designing for and you have to make the board game feel like the game um it can really be hit and miss sometimes like apparently i never played it but apparently the dark souls board game just wasn't very good um even though it felt like dark souls and i think that that you know if you're designing a board game um and you've got this kind of requirements to make it feel a certain way a lot of people a lot of people design for feeling first right i read this whole thread yesterday about how this guy's designed this new D system and it was like 130 pages of maths and i was like well look you know if that's your thing if you like that like like the battle tech uh, miniatures games made a bit of a resurgence but that's one of the crunchiest uh, games there is right you've got sheets and sheets of paper every time your mech takes damage you have to fill in a little circle you know it's hugely admin administrative thing and sometimes and if that's what you're in the mood for and that's what you want great and if that's the feel you're going for like a bureaucratic you know fucking office worker nightmare as you're playing a mech game you know that's you you know if that's the feeling you want to get out of that game great but i think that sometimes the the actual fun of the game is lost um, you know, we played the Skyrim adventure game recently that just didn't feel, it felt like you were in Skyrim, but because you didn't have the dragon shouts and I think apparently it gets fixed in the expansion as a lot of these board games do. But I, I, I think that, I think that it's an unnecessary shackle on game design is having mm-hmm. a universe to set it in. Right. And, and also I don't, I think like the audience you're trying to sell it to as well, like the Apex Legends board game. That's pushing at the, a, a very specific group of people who maybe don't like board games. And anyway, they were talking about how even now, you know, you ask someone what board games have they played, and they say Monopoly and Uno, right? They they don't know Wingspan, you know, they don't know Ticket to Ride, you know, these, right. these games that we consider the, the land. They don't know Settlers of Catan. So here, know, here's that- my question, though, right? When when you're making these board games of a video game, or you're like, if somebody was asking this the other day when I was playing Blood Bowl, would you rather play the board game original? And I was like, no, because in almost every case, the computer does all the working out and all the fucking boring rulesy well, shit. Well, no, but that depends. It won't let me do things that are against the rules. It will be a different experience, right? You can play the video game in your pants in half an hour yeah. on your own, right? Like with a beer 
online with random people. Do, playing it in person is texts people around. Do you want to play this game? Do you know the rules? Have you got a gang? Have you painted them? Do you know, you know, are we going to use this version of the rules? Have you got the, the principal DLC? You know, you have to You're get an office it. to play it. It sounds in. awful. It takes three hours. It's a very different experience. And then actually doing it and being there and moving the stuff around physically and rolling the dice physically is a different experience. It's a completely different experience. It feels very different. Sometimes it feels better. Sometimes it feels worse. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it is completely um, separate, right? I think that, that it's like poker in the casino versus poker online. You know, it, it feels versus super, super different. poker in the um, ring. <laughs> poker, uh, well, I don't know. I've never played poker at a casino. I played like blackjack and, and lots of stuff. That, like, um, you're right though. Like doing it at home feels like you're doing it because you just desperately want to gamble. Whereas I feel like going to the casino, you can do other stuff while you're there. Like it's more of an experience. Yeah, right? that's true. That's like true. I, I, I like you know, like I will go to the casino for fun with like my friends with like you know. Uh, an amount to play of money, on, uh, gaming table. Uh, yeah, yeah, with an amount yeah, yeah, of yeah. money in my mind that I'm willing to sort of like spend yeah, yeah. that evening, like and and not go over a sort of thing, and and that's pretty fun. Like, there's uh, I used to go to one in um, in Ottawa. Well, it was like in uh, in Gatineau, and uh, they had like uh, you know electronic horse racing and and like slots, and they had like those fucking um, was it Kino? Was it Kino? Kino, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, they had yeah. like all that shit. Yeah, it's just fun, you know, like it's just whatever. Like we just go for a couple hours and get some food and stuff and it was fine. So but talking, like you, you miss of, out on all that stuff, right? If you're just yeah. gambling at home on your computer. So you, we're talking about games. That's good because this email kind of ties into that. This is from Jasmine um, writing in about uh, discovering what makes you passionate in work and trying to do that for a living, right? I'm a tattoo artist. It's been my dream career since I was a teenager because um, Jasmine's obsessed with drawing um, and is a dream job for a lot of people I know and work on. Whilst I absolutely would not trade it for the world, especially as I worked 10 years in HR and recruitment for the oil and gas and mining industries. So I have a greater appreciation for not doing that now, which I can relate to. It sounds like a lot of filing. I found that this job has slightly dampened my love for art. Between people wanting a photocopy of another person's tattoo that they've seen on Pinterest, which is a big no in the industry, working every day without a break, not just tattooing, but responding to messages, drawing designs, etc., all in your off time, and working your backside off on your art to just have five people like your post on Instagram and never book anything else. Most of the time, I'm no longer doing art for me, but to fit in with the job and might work as a tattoo and bring in clients. I'm interested to hear your perspectives on how your relationships with games have changed since producing content full time and if you experience similar feelings. So now that we play games for a living, do any of us feel that we we ch have changed the way we think about gaming as something to do in our free time, and we're always thinking of it in work terms. No. We've evolved, right? Um, I've thought we talked about this a lot. I'll, I'll just quickly drop mine in. We're we're again we're very lucky, right? In that we I see people who are still playing Hearthstone after ten years, and they can't play anything else, and you can see the hate of that game in their eyes, right? They would rather be playing anything else, but they know when they do, they get no views. And in a sense, getting views is a little bit of a reward enough in itself in that I'm sure that, you know, as, as a tattoo artist, you're like, fuck, I do have to do another anchor or another <laughs> Mari thing. Skull, you know it's I mean? always skull with roses, wolf howling at the moon, or uh, crossed roses, or just a skull. Or like a heart with a knife in it and a snake mm -hmm. coiled around it. Heart with a knife and a so snake. So getting paid is its own reward in a yeah. sense. And and you can understand, but I think that we're, we're lucky in that we've, or at least I have, been able to follow my... I mean, I'm not playing Minecraft at the moment, but I think there was a time when we felt pressure to do it, and at a certain point, we just realized we weren't enjoying it and right. yeah. didn't want to push through Well, it's a, it, it's a type of content, which I think is, is more the... You 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 can all you can you can you can sort of like narrow your uh, your choices down by just doing the same thing, right? And then you become known as the person who just does that one thing, right? And that's fine as long as you're doing that thing. But it's really hard to, to branch think, out. I think that. the issue is that a lot of what we do is that we make content around games. You guys more than I do, obviously making actual like videos and stuff like that if you don't seem to be having fun, people notice that because none of us are particularly good 
at acting like we're having fun. If if we're not enjoying a game, we're probably going to say it. So if if we're playing a bad game and not enjoying it, that's fun. But if unless we're just it's playing, a brand deal, right? Well, of course, for money, that's a little that, bit different. If sure. I play the Skyrim adventure game, I'm pretending <laughs> to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know though. No, I, I mean, I, I don't did, think I you did. necessarily need need to pretend to have a good time if you're doing a brand thing. It doesn't right? happen like too often, right? Yeah, right. it doesn't happen too. I, often. I mean, I, whenever I do, and I always say the same thing, which is if this game sucks. I'm going to say it sucks while I'm playing it. And they're like, that's fine. Like, that's the yeah. only way I, I don't do it where I'm like, hey, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Today's game is Raid Shadow Legends. Like, that's not my cup of tea at all. And yeah. the people no, that do again, that, we're super, that. super lucky. And honestly, like, I, a lot of what I do, if I'm doing a brand deal, it's really because um, it makes it happen for other people too. You know, I can, right. you know, someone's like, oh, Paul's like, we really need you. You know, because a lot of the time Paul will come to me and say um, they want you, Sips, or Tom, right? <laughs> and I'll be like, uh, okay, can, uh, can 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 I do it? Can I do it? And can I do it with um, you know this person and this person, right. this person, or whatever, right? And and that way it'll kind of get other people involved in in the system somehow. And and we try and like get get every, get share the love a bit. So in the sense that has to happen. It wouldn't happen if I didn't do it, mm. right? So, and I'm not, I'm not, it's not like I'm selfless, you know, I, I will get paid, but it, to me, it, it doesn't matter as much as getting a bit of money for some of the smaller creators right. or getting them involved. Um, what, what a good guy you are. You are. Uh, I, you're tell a me about guy. it. Just a king God. of men. I know they're fucking, I know the best, but I think there is a little element of that in everything you do. But even like the Dota thing we do together, right? It feels like, Part of that was because a I just wanted to an excuse to do something with you, but I also thought you know help keep, help, help the old man out. Is that what you were? Well, thinking? it's yeah. like keeps you relevant in the Dota community. No, it um, doesn't. The Dota community <laughs> doesn't watch the Scrubcast shit. <laughs> no, it, it's no, specifically it, non-Dota people that watch. Help the an old man out. Support this <laughs> yeah, podcast. I like that. Yeah. No, I mean I don't know. It's it, it. There's all there's a there's a it's a whole multi-complex layered reason why we carry on doing it. And, yeah. 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 I still play. I still game. Uh, well, I game much more than I I ever did. But there was definitely a point where I wasn't gaming as much as I wanted to, and that was when I was creating a lot of YouTube con content because it was very bursty. You you would record for a couple of hours, but then you would spend double, triple that trying to edit a whole bunch of stuff together and posting it and everything. And uh, for me, the big change came when I started streaming more uh, because I found that I was just just playing games for a lot longer, which is what I always wanted to do, and uh, and now and now I just play like I you know like I'll, I'll stream a game all day, and sometimes I'll I'll stream again in the evening later on, like if I come back out to, to play more of the same game or or whatever. Like I'm kind of bingy with games. I always have been. Like if I get into something, I'm into it. You know, like maybe that'll last for a week, or maybe that'll last for a couple of months, or or whatever. But like I I still love getting a game enjoying it, figuring it out, you know, like getting to the point where I'm just done with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like I, I still go through those motions with games, like uh, after creating, um, you know, YouTube and Twitch and content for like over 10 years. Like I, my, my habits of, of gaming are just are more or less the same. Like I don't mm. really see gaming as like, oh, I hate it now because I'm, I'm a streamer or whatever. I would I would always be looking for reasons to play games like no matter what. <laughs> I would always be trying to get out of work or out right. of anything just so I could chill out and play some games sort of thing. So I so don't think I've changed much. Here's a here's an email from from Robbie. We move it on. Robert we from moving, Scotland. We're on. Yeah, we're gonna move on. We're gonna keep the right. emails going. Well, I just wanted to say um uh, uh, Let him say that. Go on. He's doing you a yeah. favor here, Flax. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping you out today. Come on. Yeah, that's really kind. Thank you. Carry we, on. We, we talk about this all the time. We're obsessed with this this topic, right? And we get asked about it a lot. Yeah, we get asked Which about is it fair enough. You, you're, you're bound to, right? Like, I mean, it's a, it is a weird job to, to have, um, isn't it? And, but I, I think, you know, it's you just have to be aware of your own headspace and where you are, right? Like, if you find yourself sort of getting feeling anxious... And you're like, oh, is it because I'm playing a game and not streaming it? Or am I playing a game and thinking about how I would stream it? Or am I playing a game? It I is hard to have your hobby overlap your it job, is. right? But I think the thing that the, the thing that it's hard to compare is it like, you know, in the case of being a tattoo artist, would it would you feel differently or would it be different to you if you had a 
a couple of hundred people watching you work every day. You know what I mean? Like that that's that's the thing that we have that a lot of these jobs don't have, right? Like True. you you could get into something like art related, you're really into art and then it becomes a job or whatever. But that might not be the case if you're sort of doing it for an audience, right? Like, uh, th- there's that aspect of it that keeps things fresh for us, I would say. I, I think it's true. For example, a tattoo artist would be that you lose pleasure doing art in your free time because you think you should be doing art for, for, to sell it or to, to sell it or to have a, a portfolio to sell to clients or, you know, you should be doing tattoo stuff or, you know, you're... you're or you're not doing it. You're not enjoying it for fun anymore because you, you know your or 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 your 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 art isn't popular, right? That's the other the other really s- distressing thing when you've you've created something and you've made something and you're not getting any traction on it, or it feels like no one's interested, and it's it's super stressful to yeah. feel that, and and that is often through no fault of your own. Um, you know, you know how these things happen. It's it's just you've got to just get lucky, and I think. The way to get lucky is just through persistence, right? Sometimes it's just quantity, yeah. quantity over quality. In that, you know, sometimes the thing that you threw out there that you thought was going to do shit uh, turns out to be really good. And I have that process on my art, right? That I do, right? I just do <laughs> he loads always of stuff. Up the fucking art. <laughs> I do yeah, loads and loads of stuff, <laughs> and then I shut up. And then I <laughs> do, uh, of course, uh, my art would. My, uh, well, uh, I'm not. I don't have any skill or talent. Right, so I just just do random stuff, and then something sometimes sometimes some sometimes something looks good, and I'm like, oh, that's pleasant to look at. Yeah, there you go. I'm done. Sure, I think right? that's how Van Gogh worked. As I well. want to. I just want to say one more thing on this topic. That one one thing that's interesting, uh, as, especially with uh, content creation and gaming and all that kind of stuff as well, is I would there's there's certain games that I love to play if I know people are watching me play it that I would not play on my own. Like mm. a lot of single player games, for example, like Stardew Valley. Uh, like I liked playing that knowing that I had an audience watching me play it and right. I would go around and collect everything and I enjoyed the game because of that but or partly because of that I would not have been as thorough playing that game on my own I would have lost interest way sooner sort of thing you know what I mean mm. like mm-hmm. some sometimes like uh when you're playing a game and you have people watching you um, it you're creating like a journey sort of thing that yeah, is absolutely. that is an interesting aspect of playing the game that I don't think I would have a lot of the time just playing a game alone. Like I, I wouldn't think I, when really you also play. A, feel like it, it's lost. Like this this experience could have been shared and would have been enjoyed by a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. something that Lewis said to me a long, long time ago about why he did all this was. But if someone is saying something really, really funny and memorable and people are going to enjoy it, if it's just shared amongst two or three people, that's great. But if you share it amongst more people, it's like gold that's just passing through everybody's hands if it's lost. It's yeah, just sure. sort of gone. Yeah. And you think that moment will only be remembered by a few people. Everybody's got funny stories. Yeah, and the yeah. more they're shared, the more people enjoy it. I think that's a, a net yeah. positive. Like, yeah. um, you know, I, I played Skyrim a couple of years ago and I got this mod where you could collect all of like the legendary weapons and display them in this house. It was like a, a custom mm. house and you could collect all of this shit that nor in the game normally wouldn't have a, a place for, you know what I mean? I mean, even though you could make your own house and stuff, it's hard to display some of this stuff, but this mod made it so that you had a mansion that just could display all of the kind of achievements that you get in the game. Again, I don't know if I would have done that on my own. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have been as invested without an audience. But knowing that people were watching me like go through all this and enjoying it as well made me like enjoy doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's yeah. a, it's a mm. weird thing, but it's uh it's it is definitely a thing. No, I think it makes sense. Yeah. All right, this is from Robert for Scotland. After listening to episode two four three, the idea of media companies or marketing teams committing idea theft. I'm not going to do the voice. Really resonated. Ninety <laughs> percent of my job is He's watching back. TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And YouTube videos and directly copying their ideas with our own content. What's even more thiefy is the new trend on TikTok of screenshotting Reddit threads and pasting them over videos of Minecraft parkour. We are tech a speech voice reading the threads aloud so not only is the idea of that that complete yeah yeah if you watch that was a real trend on youtube as well the thing is like they're fascinating these some of these reddit threads yeah like i read i told i did one the other day which was 
um, things you thought um, were in, were magical in Harry Potter, but it turned out that they were just English. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of those threads are kind of fun to to read through. Like, yeah, so you, you do get some good answers and stuff as well. The, the question is, uh, it's unoriginal. It's essentially ripping other people's content and putting them into TikTok. Um, Rob, Robbie, Robbie doesn't think it's a particularly organic way of of, of working. So. Um, do we have any thoughts on the recycling nature of this content? If you have someone else's Minecraft content and somebody else's Reddit thread and you just put it in a video, is that content creation or is that like essentially content sort of um, I don't know. aggregation? Like You're just putting it in a format that people there's like. There's probably this. some context uh, where where that is is okay to do, right? Like if you're... If you're if if the overarching thing is like kind of a documentary style video where you're trying to prove a point and then you're pulling in a Reddit thread and then some that's footage not, that's to not make what it, it. Is. that's not what right. it is though. I, I'd say that I'd say that that's the only time where it would be okay to do that. Then. <laughs> I found the thread. Treacle tart is the thing that most <laughs> Americans <laughs> thought was thought was uh, thought was British. Oh, uh, I thought it was magical. I guess because treacle sounds like some weird octopus. Or yeah, it sounds like weird, a right? like a like, like a tentacle. like a fairy tale thing, right? Treacle. And they were, oh. on chocolate frogs were already like a thing, so they thought it was like some sort of weird um, magical animal or something. That's fair enough. That's fair. It's enough. It's cute, isn't it? Anyway, but but uh, you know, they're, they're, if we look at like news, right? News is just half of the time, you know. Honestly, like a lot of stuff is light plagiarism. Right, yeah. So I mean, but the thing with news is that if you weren't there to experience a, a, a newsworthy event, it's fair enough that people explain what happened and tell you about it. The difference here is that all of this content was available already somewhere else and had been seen by other people. Yeah. So what you're doing is just taking someone else's successful thread and successful Minecraft video, stapling them together and saying, I've created content. And I think that the, 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 it is transformative. I think the, the, the thing is like that. Certain things are just copied, though. Everything is like from science to game design to like media, like, like from st tropes in stories, like, you know, that they're, they're all just, and, and even like this, this is why these, these Hollywood tropes exist, you know, and, and, and you almost feel like there's a right way to write, tell a story, right? right just so let, from me, let me give an example. Everything that's gone before. Let's say that someone took this podcast and put a Minecraft parkour video behind it and uploaded it to YouTube. Would you be like, oh, fair enough? Hmm. Yeah. Not, I wouldn't be cool with that. No. <laughs> so I, I think, I think the yeah. thing is that there's a difference between that kind of thing and what I was talking about, which was advertising, just nicking trends off TikTok. And because advertising companies are fucking shit, Taking two but, or but three you, years to produce If you make a Reddit the thread, ad. if you make a Reddit thread, who owns the answers? Well, Reddit, yeah, yeah, it's 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 Reddit. Do you know what I mean? like, yeah, yeah. Do you, the person who made the thread doesn't anymore, but do the individual posters own their answers, or because you posted in his thread, do they own it? Like, I guess it's 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 no man's land, right? It's just it's a like, public um, conversation. It's like Sherlock it Holmes and Cinderella or whatever that have gone out of copyright, so people can just nick it right. and slap it over their crappy. You know, some footage in the background which gets the kids interested. Yeah, they love um, Sherlock Holmes. The kids. It is it, TikTok is a, a like a, a a nightmare engine of um like trying to hook into the things that suck like humanity is is drawn to or like we like our attention. It's it's so good at hooking us in to watch it, right? And and it's just going to keep creating things that are appealing to as many people as possible. And like, if that happens to be the most appealing thing to a six-year-old is a Minecraft parkour with, yeah, um, yeah. you know, Harry Potter Reddit threads over the top of it, then that'll be that'll be it. You know, that'll go viral, and then the next thing will, will happen. You know, I, you I, know what the is... current trend is. Have you seen the current trend, Maxwell Not the really. cat? Have you seen this? Oh yeah, Maxwell. So, yeah, the guy who works for some auto body shop in Florida in America. The, he became the social media manager, and all he did was take Maxwell the cat, play a jaunty tune, and make him dance over the background. Like he comes up from the background, like he's enormous, over a picture of the auto body shop. And it went viral for whatever reason. And now all these local councils and businesses and shops are nicking the exact same thing and doing their version of Maxwell the cat dancing behind their. So Business. Maxwell the cat, we uh, he was added to Gmod. Gmod, right? yeah, yeah. And that's how he got. And we saw it on the day it was uploaded, and we recorded a video with him. And he was called Dingus in right. the video. But 
um, we didn't put the video out until like a month later. And he'd obviously gone massively viral in yeah, that yeah. time. Um, <laughs> and so it was like, we kind of like, we, we were like, we were, we, I saw that whole thing like f- happen. And obviously, yeah, it's, it, it's weird how the, it's weird to see a, a be there at the start of a meme. I almost feel like I saw a celebrity right. um, before he was famous. That's do funny. you know what I mean? Yeah, that's funny. Um, it's kind I of mean, my, my eldest knows about Maxwell the Cat, and, and she, you know, I mentioned it. She was like, oh, yeah, Maxwell the Cat, he's from Gmod. And I was like, oh, wow, you, you know what? <laughs> from Gmod. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, some, some people had like made like a few stupid Gmod poops type thing with right. him. Um, because you know Gmod's still a very funny physics engine. It is, yeah. Just to, to, to fling stuff around in. Hey, my uh, and, my um, son recently uh, started watching Doctor Who, and he's like, uh-huh. uh, he feels. I think it's one of those shows where he feels like a bit grown up, like more grown up watching it. You know, like, uh, and sure. so, and for that reason, he 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 likes it, and uh, and for other reasons too. I mean, it's probably pretty good. I, I've never really watched it, but. Um, he was on, uh, he was on our iPad the other day and, uh, he was on iPlayer and he's like, dad, I just watched the first ever episode of Doctor Who and it was so good. I was like, wow, really? Like they have that on there? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to, do you want to see like, uh, the start of it? There's this one part. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. And I was expecting to see like fucking old ass Doctor Who. Black and yeah, white. Yeah. And yeah. It was the one with that guy, Chris, Chris Eccles. <laughs> like, it's like, not that old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it was, he, he there was like eight doctors before <laughs> him. Thinks he, Sorry. He, he thinks that that's the, uh, the very first series. Pretty funny. I guess that's the first, uh, like rebooted modern yeah, series, yeah, I think right? It is. Yeah. So, yeah, it was 2005. So still, you know, that <laughs> is a long time ago for a week. That is actually sure. decent time. It's like double his, double his, uh, his life in in years ago. Right. I saw Christopher Eccleston the other day. He was at the um, old Duke in Bristol. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. He lives in Bristol, does he? No, I think he was visiting. Did you but, um, did you go up to him and do your usual? Mr. Eccleton! Mr. Eccleton! Mr. Eccleton! Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! You were the first Doctor Who! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is from uh, I don't know if this is Ewan or Yuan. I apologize. Uh my name is Ewan or Yuan. I have a question. What is the best slash weirdest piece of fan mail you've received? The reason I ask is because I work at a mail hub that provides virtual addresses. One of our most interesting clients Uh. is a Twitch streamer who uses our virtual address service to receive fan mail and keep their personal home address private. The streamer in question has nearly 2 million followers. Somewhat consequently, they receive some pretty bizarre stuff, including jars of piss, letters confessing love and proposing marriage, drugs, and once we even had a sheep skull delivered for them. Uh, Jesus. Wow. I'm trying to think, what is the weirdest piece of fan mail? All of those are better than ours. Yeah, Yeah, I've I've never gotten any any contraband. I've never had any... um, bodily fluids or clippings or anything like that it's it's usually just like it, it one thing i i seem to receive a lot of is like old dvds or like <laughs> old cd rom uh cd roms for games you know like somebody will find yeah. like the cd rom version of a game i played well you the thing is you'll me- mention it or remember be like oh do you remember mist yeah yeah, yeah. do you remember Missed, and then someone will send you their fucking CD of it. Or I was at. Like, I've got a copy of Missed Tips. What's it? I was at. Uh, uh, which is fine. I was at Jesse Cox Con a couple of years ago, and yeah. uh, we did a panel where we were talking about. Uh, we were trying to guess each other's age based on stuff that was relevant around the time we were like a certain age or whatever, and uh, that that topic just you know went went off off the rails. But we were talking about movies and stuff. And we started talking about the mummy and uh, like I'd only seen like the first mummy and I didn't remember much about it. And, and Jesse was uh, amazed that this was the case and stuff. And, um, and at, by the end of the convention, I received like 15 copies of the mummy on DVD, like, uh, like the special <laughs> collectors, like multi-pack. And like, I, I just went home you with like this watch the mummy. library <laughs> of the mummy and all the sequels and like all this mummy memorabilia. I thought that was pretty funny. Mummy Abelia. Uh, mummy mum, Mummy Abelia, yeah. Uh, tons tons very, of mummy. Very, tons of copies joke. of the mummy. So if anybody wants a copy. So what does that mean? That would you, that means that you were too old? So you're older I think than I, Yeah, I think I was too old at the time to really uh, appreciate the mummy. Like I feel like when when people uh speak fondly of the movie The Mummy, they're uh they were around the same age I was when the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie came out because right. I remember that being I was like almost pissing my pants. I was so excited. When I say to you, game console, what yeah. do you think? 
immediately. Game console. Just the original NES. The original I, NES. I never had one. So for me, I think of um, the Atari 2600 VCS. Right. That I had in you, the... When I say the words game console to you, you think of the Atari 2800 VCS. 2600 yeah. VCS. Sorry. My <laughs> first, like, I, I'd say I'd, my earliest memories of gaming on a console would have been the NES, playing like Contra and uh, like Zelda and, and shit like that. The original like I, Super I Mario Brothers. Like I think I've Brothers. said this before, I never, I never had one. My dad refused to get me one, got me a Commodore 64, which was because I was a little to program. So I had my Commodore 64, which was which was a great machine, but I, I had it way past its its uh, yeah. best by date. I went to visit him in the States, and he had a fucking NES. And yeah. I thought, you miserable bastard, how they dare were big, you? They were big time when they came out. Yeah, but how could you get one for yourself and not for your young son? What the fuck? I was so angry. Well, I remember the, the NES was awesome because uh, back back then, more so than now, I suppose, you could rent games, right? So, like, uh, it was always a big deal at the weekend. You'd go and rent a couple of games mm. and that would see you through the, the weekend. I remember yeah. renting Contra and I remember my parents playing it for about an hour to make sure it was okay for me to play. So, I'm sitting there watching them play Contra. Oh, my God. Falling into all the holes over and over and not <laughs> And I was like, Mom, come on! Let me do it! I can do this! <laughs> like, I was like, I was losing my mind. I was like eight years old, I think, at the time. Um, but yeah, it was funny. We had like a, we had one of those big uh, CRT TVs that had like the the wooden casing around it, you know, like uh, oh, yeah, yeah, with like the door knockers on it and stuff. And uh, that was in our living room, and uh, and my dad hooked up the Nintendo to it, and that's so you you were, I would just be sitting there playing Nintendo in our living room with like the, my whole family just sitting around basically watching me play because it yeah. was. It was such why, a novelty at the time. Why Why were we obsessed with concealing our televisions in the past? I don't know, putting them in Putting them in cupboards. I mean, I'm not being funny. Those things were huge. You're not hiding it. Everyone knows it's the TV. It doesn't need little doors Honestly, to, like, to yeah. hide it. Honestly, it's kind of weird to see a room without a TV in it. Yeah, it is. I read a uh, I read a, a Reddit thread recently where it said, what, what is, what, like, from your childhood uh, signifies bedtime, you know, like, and people were were guessing how old people were based on what they were coming back with, you right. know? like because some people would be like, "Oh, it was uh, d you know, Disney Family Hour would be on, and when it was done, I had to go to bed or whatever." For me, it was the Muppet Show. Yeah, Muppet Show and Mash, fucking yeah, Mash Muppet on TV. Show and Mash, yeah, and Ma yeah. Mash was on TV. I knew like bedtime was imminent. Like uh, I'd hear like, yeah, the fucking music, and I knew that was like okay. Wow, like in the next half an hour, I'm going to bed. Like there's for me, it was um, like either a touch of Frost, Inspector Morse, or X Files. Yeah. They were the things that were like I'm go I'm going to bed now. Yeah, yeah. Man, oh, like, man. What, what about what if, what if I say to you like the first online game you played, the first game you played on a lab? Ultima Online um, was the first truly online game that I yeah, played. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, that was mine as well. I think Ultima Online. I played. Um, I I played uh, like direct dial um, multiplayer games as well. I play. I I remember me and my friend used to play. Duke Nukem 3D and Doom 2, like right. uh, direct connect on mo the, yeah, like the a, old dial yeah, the old LAN. Yeah, do, yeah. We, uh, we would do that on a LAN. Like yeah. you set up a daisy chain of uh, of cables with your fucking um, and we your, used your, your cable with the it's had a sort of socket that had to go into the back of the computer, and you had to have a null terminator on the end. Yeah, and then getting Windows PCs to network back then was a Fucking nightmare. Yeah, anybody, was, yeah. anybody will remember that. It was unbelievable. It was so so. so yeah, so we bad. used to play. We used to play those games direct uh, connect. And then I remember as well, me and my friend before Warcraft Two came out, they had the BattleNet edition of Warcraft Two, which came out later. So when Warcraft Two was first released and uh, and had its it, it, its expansion, you couldn't really you could play it direct connect against uh, a friend, whatever same same idea. But Microsoft used to have a service called uh, the Internet Gaming Zone, which was incredibly a web service. This must have been in like 1994, 1995, and you could uh, you could create multiplayer lobbies on there. Me and my friend. We used to play Warcraft 2 Direct Connect, and we thought we were really good because we only ever played against each other. We didn't know that there was other people out there that would be good. So we were like, when we found out about Microsoft Internet Gaming Zone, we were like, holy <laughs> shit, we're going to go on there. We'll team up. We're going to clean house, right? And that was our first exposure to really sweaty internet people. 
these guys <laughs> had like these fucking they had like bloodlust ogres up within like 30 seconds of the game starting and stuff and it was just like we were we were we were immediately outclassed like it was just fucking impossible oh, so uh, yeah. yeah there you go yeah that's great we got a, yeah. got a let, let's end, i guess we can end on this email since it's it's a, it's a classic um this is from matthew uh i'm from a county in georgia named forsyth which is nice, cool. and I, nice. I thought Perian would like that, but that's not even the best part. The town's name is Cumming. Uh, <laughs> nice. And it's spelled C U M M I N G. And yes, that is spelled correctly. To top that off, we have a Dick's Sporting Goods and a BJ's Wholesale. So my town has a Cumming Dick's and Cumming BJ's. Nice. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Thank you so much, Matthew. <laughs> what a precious email. That's like great. You. See, so Wisconsin, well, well, you, you, don't, you don't have any of that. I'm just saying. I know we weren't <laughs> going to talk about Wisconsin, but... Yeah, uh, that's Georgia, baby. Yeah, that, Georgia. Uh, I think I Georgia sounds like yeah. the kind of place I'd like to visit, actually. Yeah, let's go to Georgia. I want to check it out. Yeah, and hell yeah. I'm two, down. Two more, two more uh, car accident emails. So uh, we need to add in... At the start of the Triforce podcast, uh, people have urged us to add a, a warning. If you are driving while listening to this podcast, please be careful. Please be careful. Well, this is not, this is not I don't the think it's... A, I, I, no, I, I, I would like to think that, I forgot. that some of these accidents are caused by people <laughs> laughing uh, so much that they can't see the road anymore. But uh, the reality is these people are probably falling asleep at the wheel while the podcast probably is it. on. Yeah, which is, I, uh, I would imagine so. Upsetting to All think right, about. Thanks, but. thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. All right. <laughs> peace. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.